You probably know this already, but the camera built into your iPhone is pretty incredible. And combined with built-in software, it allows pretty much anyone, regardless of their photography skills, to take some pretty amazing photos. It is, frankly, an amazing tool, but like all tools, there's a difference between using your iPhone camera and getting the most out of it. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 tips and settings to help you get more from the iPhone camera app. Stick with me until the end of this video. I reckon there are a couple of tips in here that most people won't be aware of. Okay, let's get into it. There's a concept in photography known as the rule of thirds. The idea is that if you take a subject and position it dead center in your frame, that's quite a boring composition. The rule of thirds encourages you to break your frame up into nine equal parts and then position your subject in the left or right, top or bottom third of the frame. The empty space in the rest of the frame will help draw your eye to the subject of the photo and create a much better composed shot. Now you could apply this rule freehand, so to speak. Just look at the frame and figure out where the thirds would be. There's nothing wrong with that. But your iPhone camera does have a grid setting and it makes composition like this much easier. To access it, head to settings, then camera, then toggle on grid. You've now got an on-screen grid of thirds and it will apply regardless of the aspect ratio you choose. So whether you use four by three or whether you switch to square or 16 by nine, the grid will show and will amend itself accordingly. Honestly, one of the most important steps to learning to take better photos on your iPhone is to gain a better understanding of photography in general. And that's where the sponsor of this video comes in, Skillshare. Classes like Photography Essentials by Sean Dalton will help you make sense of the fundamentals of photography. So if the idea of learning about exposure, focus and composition all feel a bit overwhelming to you, Skillshare can help you make sense of it all. I recently picked up a new camera for the channel and I love the fact that I could jump from a generic photography course to something like Fundamentals of DSLR Photography by Justin Bridges and brush up on the foundations to get the most out of my new kit. And it goes way beyond photography. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. It's ad free, so you can stay in the zone while you're learning. And there are loads of new premium classes being launched each week. If that sounds good to you, the first 1000 people to use the link on my description box or my code proper honest tech will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Okay, so we all know that if you tap the shutter button, you'll take a photo. But did you know that if you press and hold the shutter button, you'll begin recording a video? If you swipe over to the right when doing this, you lock the video recording mode in and you can take your finger off of the shutter button and the video will continue recording. But if you swipe to the left and hold it there instead, you'll see this little counter begin counting up where the shutter button is. That's burst mode kicking in and you can use this function to quickly snap lots of frames in rapid succession great for sport or capturing action photos of your fast moving kids or pets, or even just taking a bunch of photos of your friends or family so that you've got a better chance of getting one where everyone has their eyes open. When you've taken your burst pictures, head to the camera roll and you'll see at the top of the picture, it will say burst and then the number of photos included in the burst. Down at the bottom here, you can see select. This allows you to scroll through the pictures in the burst and select any that you might wanna keep. You just tap the select button down at the bottom right and choose done. Live photos are a bit of a love them or hate them feature, but if you're a fan of them, you might not be aware of the option you have to choose a key photo as part of your live photo. To do this, head to a live photo in your library. If I tap and hold on the screen, the live photo will play as you'd expect. If I tap the edit button, you can see down here next to the cancel button, we've got a live photo button. If I tap on that, you can see that you can use your finger to move around the frames of the photo. And when you find one that you like, you can tap the make key photo button. This doesn't change the overall live photo. It's still the same picture, but it will change the photo that you see as a preview when you're swiping through images in your camera roll. So you can of course pick the frame that you think best represents your picture. Your iPhone will, by default, focus on what it believes you'd like to focus on, and it's using some pretty advanced AI to do this. For example, if I put this camera lens on my desk and position my iPhone so that the camera lens is taking up much of the space in the frame, the camera will focus on the lens. 
This creates what's known as a depth of field effect, where something at the front of the frame is in focus, but the background isn't, creating bokeh, or that nice blurry background that you see in professional photography. Portrait mode on your iPhone also uses AI to try and help you achieve this look. But you can override this if you wish and tell the iPhone what you'd like to focus on. And you would do that by tapping on the background of the frame while you're lining up your shot to let your iPhone know that you'd like it to focus on something other than what's in the foreground. You can see that the lens is now out of focus while the background is in focus. Now, this is obviously not the most exciting shot in the world as an example, but you could absolutely experiment with this when you're out and about, transforming what might otherwise be a pretty bland image into something much more interesting. Your camera app uses auto exposure to determine how exposed a photo should be. In other words, how much light the camera should be allowing in for your shot. I've found that in general, the iPhone will typically overexpose rather than underexpose, which makes sense. Consumers in general prefer vibrant, bright shots rather than dull ones. But if you'd like a bit more control of the exposure of your shot, perhaps if you're shooting with a bright light source that's distorting your image a little, you can manually control it. There are multiple ways to access these controls. When you tap on the screen when taking a photo, this square will appear. That's your focus control. But then if you swipe up and down on the sun icon to the right of that, you can manually increase or decrease the exposure of your shot, making it lighter or darker. You can also access the additional camera controls and tap on the plus minus button, which will also allow you to access your exposure controls. In fact, in this method, you can be a bit more granular, helping you to choose an exact setting that works for you. Light is ultimately one of the most important factors in photography, and so having more control over it is gonna help you achieve much more professional results. Have you gone to take a picture with your iPhone of something on your table and noticed a little crosshair icon appear on your screen? Be honest, if you've ever taken an Instagram picture of your dinner, you've definitely seen this. That's actually a tool to help you ensure that you're positioning your camera perfectly horizontally when taking the photo, therefore generating a perfect top-down image. Naturally, when you hold the phone facing down, you'll probably think you've got it perfectly horizontal when in fact you haven't. So this can actually be super helpful and it's very easy to use. Just tilt the phone until the white and yellow crosshairs line up perfectly. Once they do, you've got a perfectly horizontal phone and the shot that you take will also be perfectly horizontal. This function is currently only available on the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max, but if you own one of these phones, you have the ability to take macro photographs. The way the camera works by default is if you move close to a particular subject, the macro lens will kick in automatically and will switch off again when you pull back out but you might prefer a bit more control over when the macro function switches on or off rather than your phone deciding for you. To do this, head to settings, then camera, and ensure that macro control has been switched on. Now, when you move the camera close to a subject, you'll see this little flower icon appear on the screen. Tapping that will enter macro mode and tapping it again will toggle macro mode off. An annoying habit of the camera app is to reset each time you open it, defaulting to certain settings. If you've spent time configuring the camera app the way that you like it, or for example, if you're recording in video a lot, but the camera app keeps defaulting to photo mode each time you open it, it can be super annoying. There is a way to easily fix this though. Head to settings, then head to the camera, then tap on preserve settings. In here, you can choose to preserve various settings. In other words, retain the same settings as last time, each time you open the camera app. So if you toggle on camera mode and have the camera shooting in video, when you reopen the app, it will be in video mode, just as you left it. You can do this for a bunch of different settings, creative controls for things like filters, aspect ratios, macro control, exposure adjustment, all things which can really help speed up your overall workflow, helping you to capture exactly what you want each time without having to mess around with settings.
Okay, so we mentioned live photos earlier and how they're a bit of a love them or hate them feature, but there is quite a cool function of live photos that I think many people won't know about. You see, once you've taken a live photo, if you then head into your photo library, you can see up here in the top left, it's a live photo. If you tap on that, you've got some options. You've got loop, which will, like it says, loop the video of the live photo and just keep endlessly playing whatever you've captured, essentially creating a short looped video. You've got bounce, which is essentially a boomerang feature. But the one I wanted to show you was long exposure. This is kind of like the effect you get when you set your shutter speed on your camera to really slow, while there's movement happening in your frame, allowing you to capture a kind of wavy, dreamy effect. It works really well with water or spotlighting, and you're gonna wanna hold your phone as still as possible when you capture the live photo. A tripod would be your best friend here, but give it a go. You can take some really cool photos using this mode. This one might sound super obvious because it is, but I hadn't thought of it until I read about someone else doing it. Your iPhone has a panoramic photo mode, which allows you to capture shots of impressive landscapes by panning from left to right. Your iPhone will then stitch together your panoramic photo. But you can also use it to capture particularly tall photos. To do this, you're gonna have to hold your phone in horizontal mode and then pan the phone upwards slowly, just like you would left to right for a landscape, but it does work. And whilst I guess this will only be particularly useful if you live near tall buildings or something similar, it can create a pretty cool effect. So there you go, 10 tips to help you get more from the iPhone camera app. What about you? What iPhone photography tips would you have included in this list? Drop me a comment and let's talk about it. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.